Right, you may be reading the title of this video and you may be thinking, Duke Sloth, what the hell is that clickbait? How does Naja old hit six times? But it's actually not clickbait. This is not a joke. Naja old hits six times. Now let me explain this a little further. The one who pointed this out to me was Flareboot. If you don't know him, he is the guy who made uh, the Word of Thought, which is basically a summary of a lot of interesting, insightful, in-depth information about Smite. If you haven't checked that out yet, feel free to do so. Links down below. So what he told me is that there are more instances of Najah's ultimate than most people are aware of. Most of you know that the ultimate itself has three hits that can critically hit, where you have to click. And if you play the character a few times, you will also realize that there's additional damage when the enemy drops to the ground. So you basically have four instances of damage there. What some people know, or a decent amount of people will also know, is that there is actually pickup damage as well. So before you even hit the enemy the first time in the air, you deal damage to them when you pick them off the ground. This actually happens before the enemy is CC'd already. But what hardly anyone knows, and I didn't know either, is that there is a sixth instance of damage, which is another hit after the three hits are completed. So in total, we have one a hit that can not crit, which is the pickup hit. Then we have three hits that you, well, basically get animated and that you can crit with. Then you have another hit before the enemy gets to the ground again that cannot crit. And then you have the drop damage on the ground, which is a little higher, which can also not crit. After hearing about this, my first thought was, what does that mean for his builds? So many of you know that the very standard typical build basically back in the day was something like Bamba's Mask, Power Boots, Jotun's Wrath, and then you look to get Deathbringer to maximize your crit damage in the ultimate. In Season 3 we've already seen a lot of builds that basically stray from this path, be it via implementing a winged blade beforehand, be it via double penetration to get more damage off the ring toss, similar strategies have been applied all over the place, in the pro scene you hardly see Deathbringer being rushed that early, it's usually built later. Uh, but in, well, more casual games you will often still see the traditional Deathbringer early build. Not rushed, but early build. And with this new information, I wanted to see if that actually makes sense. If the highest damage you can achieve with the ultimate is actually by building Deathbringer, or if there are potentially other options that actually get you more damage. In addition to that, I also have to consider what that means for the rest of his abilities, for the rest of his build, for the rest of his basic attacks, so that will be factored in later, but let's first talk about the ultimate in itself. So we have a total of 6 instances of damage, of which 3 can crit, that means that only 3 will get amplified by Deathbringer as well. We go through different item combinations and see how they work. In order to test that, the items we're using are Warrior Tabi, Jotun's Wrath in every single build and then whatever we need to fill that up. So the other items that are tested come after that. Because you always want that bit of pen, you always want that bit of cooldown reduction, you always want that bit of mana. So for that sake, you will usually get Jotun's Wrath. You could also get Hydra's Star or Hydra's Lament, but it's a little more complicated for calculations, so we're using Jotun's Wrath for the sake of simplicity. The first one is the weakest one, being Void Shield plus Mace. This is actually a little more expensive than Deathbringer, the total price here would be 3,350 in Season 4. And there is a problem with Void Shield and Najah's ultimate. The first instance of damage, the pickup damage, is considered on the ground, and so is the drop down damage, meaning that Void Shield procs for both of those and the protection reduction applies, so the enemy has 20 less flat protection. But the four instances of damage in the air, the three hits that can crit and the one hit that can't, don't get affected by that. Because the enemy is in somewhat of a banished state, they are not affected by a Void Shield's passive at all, so they have those 20 protections they'd otherwise lose. And that means that your damage in the air is significantly lower than if you were to have a penetration item. So the total damage of the combo on a level 12 Naja versus a Squishy, a level 12 Ra, would be 762 damage, which is relatively low in comparison. The second option I tested out was Titan's Bane. Titan's Bane plus Mace is still cheaper than Deathbringer, it is a total of 2950 gold, 
and the damage here is a little lower obviously simply because I tested this on a raw and as you all know flat damage does more uh, flat penetration does more against targets like raw squishy targets earlier in the game compared to percentage penetration like Titan's Bane which will work better against tankier targets so as such naturally Titan's Bane's damage is a little lower it comes in at a solid 806 damage though which is not that bad if we go through the later values this is nothing that would imply any major losses in regards to DPS so yeah Titan's Bane may not sound like an early rush choice but it is not that bad you definitely should have Dalton's Wrath beforehand and it should also only be built if you're not planning on building further penetration items down the road because otherwise the flat penetration will usually help you more at this point but there is a case to be made that it's not terrible. The next option is actually the one that well most of you probably use at the moment which is Deathbringer. It comes in at 3200 gold which is you know quite a value but what it offers you is a little different from the others because this item just has raw power, it has the extra crit damage and it has no penetration. In this case the total damage of the ultimate, assuming that you crit all three hits, which you should if you play the character for more than two days, is 828 damage. Which is a very good value, it's more than Titan's Bane by a little bit, not significantly, but it is pretty good. This is against a level 12 RAR, so it will still deal a decent amount of damage at that level. And it is still very bursty. But it's not as crazy as you may think. Another item that I used for comparison was the Crusher, the new version of the Crusher in Season 4. And a Mace on top of that, so a total of 2950 gold. And the damage difference here was 7 damage. So the total damage in that case was 821 damage. And if you compare that side by side, you actually have another 250 gold towards your next item in that case already. You also have that CDR benefit from Crusher. And yeah, the damage is not as huge as you would think it is. The highest damage actually goes to another combination, and that is Brawler's Beatstick plus Mace. Even cheaper here, because Brawler's Beatstick is 100 gold cheaper, so we're coming in at 2850 gold. You get the anti-heal effect, but not much else. And the ultimate deals a total of 845 damage. So, no, Deathbringer is actually not the strongest item for Naja's ultimate when it comes to what you can get for the gold that you're spending. And to me, that is very surprising, but knowing that there are actually six instances of damage of which only three can crit, it makes a lot more sense. I always thought that you sacrifice at least a little bit of damage for going for the penetration route, but actually you may end up getting more damage in certain situations. After that you can still build the mace into Titan's Bane and then if you haven't yet you should clearly consider Deathbringer because at some point of the game you want to have it because it works very well in combination with the penetration as well. But as an early item it's not actually as important as it is made out to be if you want the highest amount of burst. It does have some benefits though that these numbers don't really highlight. A millinery sash, Najas 3, can crit as well. The damage benefit from that can be pretty huge if you have Deathbringer because it can be an unexpected amount of high burst damage onto a lockdown target that can still ult afterwards or just force out beats just with that crit. So for that reason it is sometimes good to still go for Deathbringer over something else. At the same time, ring toss damage will be a lot higher if you have some sort of penetration. So, for example, the ring toss damage on a Deathbringer in this particular case would be 155 per bounce, whereas with a Brawler's Beatstick and Mace it would be 176 per bounce. So you get 21 damage per bounce on top, which can quickly add up to a high amount of damage. So in my opinion, it's a lot more about how you want to position yourself in fights. If you feel like you're in enough of a lead to go in aggressively, sash the target very often and get off your damage that way, or are you planning to use a lot of basic attacks, which would mean that you have a higher chance to crit there as well, then Deathbringer is still the stronger choice. DPS-wise, it will always be the better choice just because of the fact that it has crit. But at the same time, you can't always rely on that and often you will find yourself in situations where you can't just fully commit and you're just looking to poke and in that case uh, every option that offers you penetration is actually better. Ring toss would just do a lot more damage that way. In theory void shield would also be very very strong in that regard but void shield seems to be very problematic due to the ultimate 
not interacting with it. So I'd probably stay away from it on Najat simply because he doesn't really get the full benefit of the item. Other things to consider are if you're gonna need anti-heal eventually, because then you might as well get Brawlers early because it's cheaper and gives you a better power curve, or if you're not gonna need it. Or if you're looking for more cooldown reduction, then you should probably invest into Crusher over anything else, simply because it offers the most of that from these items in combination with penetration. So really, the choices are more depending on the whole situation in the game. Overall, though, I think Deathbringer has been too highly valued without actually knowing the whole mechanics of the ultimate, and I am very much guilty of that. As such, I hope this additional info was insightful for you and may help you with your decision on how to build Najah. I thank you guys for watching, I will see you for the next video tomorrow, and yes, it's gonna be about Season 4 and how to play Season 4 in Conquest and how the hell that's all gonna work, because I'm getting tons of questions about that and don't worry, it's all coming. Most of next week will probably be committed to just getting you into Season 4 the best way possible. Thank you for watching, Duke Sloth, out.